Hi everyone, Pam Gregory, Astrologer. I'm going to be talking to you today about the second half of April and the full moon that we have coming up in Libra on the 19th. Now, the second half of this month particularly is much more dynamic and action-oriented than we've had for the last few weeks. Through March, we had three weeks of Mercury moving retrograde in Pisces and even once it moved out of its retrograde phase on the 28th, it was still conjunct Neptune, and it's only on the 17th of April that it moves out of that uh, retrograde shadow phase. It moves beyond the 29 degrees of Pisces, which is where it began its retrograde, and it moves into Aries. And that's when we'll start a whole series of things that indicate more clarity and more forward movement. So while we have very dreamy and imaginative and creative energy, it often wasn't the best for logical, analytical processes and making big decisions. And it can create a lot of muddledom and confusion. And um, from where I sit in England, that was very clear. But we have a lot of cardinality at this time, which is also very action oriented. We have many planets in cardinal signs and they are Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn. And in particular, we have this very dominating conjunction, which we're going to have for the next two years uh, between Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. Saturn's at 20 of Capricorn, Pluto's at 23, and in between, sandwiched in between those planets, we have the South Node. And as I've mentioned in past videos, this is very much about how power is being used. Are we seeing the right use of power or the abuse of power? Because when Pluto transits a sign, and it takes many years to do that, it really brings up the shadow side of that sign. So, for instance, when it was moving through Libra, the sign of relationship, the divorce level surged. When it was moving through Scorpio, the sign of sexuality, we had the AIDS crisis. When it was moving through Sagittarius, connected to belief systems and religion, we had radical fundamentalist religions appearing with a lot of terrorism as well attached to those beliefs. Now it's moving through Capricorn, which is this very, um, a very conservative and vertical top-down system of control and power in a society. It's the patriarchy, whether it's governments or corporations or institutions that exert a lot of power. As an example, um, one of the previous times that Saturn and Pluto were in Capricorn was in the 1520s. And at the time, the church had a great deal of power and control in society. And it was Martin Luther who challenged that and ultimately brought about the Refor Reformation. So it's a very, um, that's what we're going through. This whole process, and Pluto won't move out of Capricorn fully until 2025, but it always deconstructs and then reconstructs the symbolism of the sign that it's moving through. And I hope I've given you some examples to make that clear. Not only are Pluto and Saturn conjunct the moon's south node, they are also conjunct their own planetary south nodes as well. So we have this tremendous concentration of focus between 20 and 23 degrees of Capricorn. It is highly karmic, particularly because the south nodes are involved. And we won't have as tight a grouping as this for the rest of the year. We have, yes, the conjunction between Saturn and Pluto becoming exact in January next year, but with this connection with the moon south node as well and the planetary nodes. So it's very karmic, and this is a time when karmic chickens could come home to roost in quite a significant way, particularly in the second half of the month because we've got a full moon that tends to reveal things. But as I say, we have this sense of dynamism and momentum starting to change the energy. Mercury, as I mentioned, is moving into Aries on the 17th, and on the 20th of the month, Venus moves into Aries too. On the same day, Mars in Gemini moves what is called out of bounds. Now, normally planets will orbit within 23 degrees north or south of the ecliptic. When they go beyond that 23 degrees north or south, it is known as out of bounds. 
Now, last year, between May and November, Mars was also out of bounds for that whole period. And one of the manifestations was, if you, you'll remember this, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, it was one of the hottest summers ever recorded. There were lots of heat-related deaths, many fires, many droughts. It was heat because Mars rules Aries, the sign of primal fire. It is moving out of bounds again on the 20th of April until the 12th of June. So it may be heat, although the Earth astronomically is now moving into a time of solar minima, which suggests cooling temperatures. But with Uranus in Taurus, I think we'll see swings every which way. Heat, cold, floods, droughts, etc. Uranus is in Taurus for the next seven years, remember. But it may be because Mars is in Gemini, it may be hot words, angry words. So be very aware of that because be quick. Gemini speedy, ruled by Mercury, very quick. So catch yourself if you're on the brink of saying something that you might regret, or always take a breath. It may be angry words by our leaders, but it will certainly energize our mind in extraordinary ways, energize our thinking. It will give us courage, it will give us daring. But whenever a planet is out of bounds, it can create a sort of excessive or out of control feeling for that symbolism. So it'll be interesting to watch that. On the 19th of the month, we have our full moon. Now, for the last five months, the full moons have been at zero degrees of their signs. This one is at 29, 29 degrees and six minutes of Libra. Um, and that's happening at 4, 12 a.m. Pacific and 12, 12 p.m. UK time. Now, this zero degrees, 29 degrees of the signs really emphasizes this sense of endings and beginnings, this huge sense of transformation that we're going through, not only politically, socially, it will be economically with Uranus and Taurus, it, it is very much spiritually as well. I think many, many people feel this huge shift in consciousness that we're going through. And all the things I've talked about so far and, and will be talking about are part of that picture. Now, 29 degrees of a sign is the critical degree. And this really brings up the shadow side of a sign. So with Libra, it's about relationships. And the sign of Libra in general is about, um, it's about equality, it's about balance, about fairness and justice and harmony and kind of sort of putting yourself in advanced yoga positions to keep that peace within a relationship. However, the 29 degree um, point suggests that we may have over-compromised or been over-adaptive or too much other directed. We've bent to others' wills in too big a way. And now we're at the 29 degrees, we've reached the end of the road in niceness, in diplomacy, in civilised behaviour. That's really what that's about. However, the sun is conjunct Uranus. The sun is at 29 of Aries, conjunct Uranus at 2 of Taurus. And this is completely different energy. The sun is also on the other side, conjunct Eris at 23 of Aries. And in fact, the, the sun is at its midpoint um, of Eris and Uranus. So this is much more combustible, radical, eruptive energy. And the one thing that, the, that Libra and Uranus share is their, their desire for equality, their desire for fairness. But the way they go about it is absolutely antithetical because the niceness, the diplomacy, the compromise of Libra is, doesn't figure with the Uranus archetype. It is the maverick. It's not going to comply. It's not going to compromise. It's going to be out on the street. It's going to challenge the status quo. It's going to make things radical, make things fast, overturn the status quo. It's going to challenge society's values because it's in Taurus, the sign of values. It's going to really shake things up in a, in a radical, radical way. And what emphasizes that as well, this whole um, grouping in Capricorn is widely squared by Uranus still, but it's also very tightly squared by Eris. 
Eris is at 23 degrees of Aries. It's exactly square to Pluto and Capricorn, pretty much exactly square the south node and, and pretty tightly within three degrees of the square to Saturn as well. So Eris is the, is the goddess of discord. Very similar to Uranus, wants to be out there breaking things up breaking things up, breaking things down to, to move to the higher level of being. So we have this continuing theme of the revolutionary, the eruptive energy in society is meeting the repressive. The Capricorn down, top down, law and order, rules and regulations, you can't behave like this in order to perpetuate the patriarchy uh, type of behavior. So it's gonna be very interesting I think round about this full moon. Full moons bring thing, brings things, uh, they bring things to a head because they're the peak of the moon cycle. Emotions tend to come to a head. Things can, can be revealed at a full moon and particularly because Uranus is so strongly highlighted here, being opposite the moon and conjunct the sun, it is the sword of truth. Uranus has to get to the truth. So any kind of fogginess, muddle, dumb lack of clarity we had over the last few weeks, particularly with Mercury retrograde continuing in Pisces conjunct Neptune, is going to be um, cleared away. I think we're going to get a much clearer sense of the truth. And as I say, Uranus and Eris, their principle is to break down, to break through. So round about this time, a few days to either side of this full moon, we could see breakdown in diplomacy. We could see breakthrough in diplomacy to make some new decisions with Mercury now in Aries. So really um, very interesting how this is operating. If we include the nodal axis as well, this is actually a cardinal grand cross. We have the grouping in Capricorn, opposing the north node in Cancer, both squaring the sun and moon, um, moon in Libra, sun in Aries at this full moon. This makes it even more productive and dynamic and action oriented. We also, you know, that the, the the karmic nature of this second half of April is so strong, and that's why I think um, karma can come home to roost at this time. Because apart from everything I've said about that tight grouping of Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn with the South Node, on the 24th of the month, Pluto goes stationary retrograde. On the 30th of the month, Saturn goes stationary retrograde. And they are barely moving those two planets through the whole of April. Whenever a planet goes stationary retrograde, it slows right down and it drills down on a particular degree point and it emphasizes, it magnifies the symbolism of that um, archetype. So with Pluto round about the 24th, give or take a few days, I would read this really virtually from the 17th of the month, in fact. Um, we're going to have power issues coming to a head, the wielding of power, and, and with Saturn it's going to be control, rules and regulations, law and order, borders and boundaries, walls, etc., division, separations. So we will watch how that manifests, but it is all part of this whole process of transforming that Capricorn archetype in terms of the way that power operates in society. Now, I've mentioned in the last couple of videos that I very much see Capricorn energy as, as dense, as material, as tangible 3D energy. It's the, it's the world we've always operated in that we have seen as reality. However, there are other planetary aspects happening right now which take us to a very different place. The ongoing square, which I've talked about recently between Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces, this is very different. This is unbounded, it's infinite possibilities, it's to do with a spiritual impetus to move to a more perfect place in, in society. It's about seeing life as a dream and being able to master your energy and attention to, to manifest anything you want, anything at all, any possibility, using the, the symbolism of that square. Jupiter is also in an out of sign trine to Uranus. And this can bring about um, a desire for freedom, a desire for escape together with the square to, to Neptune too, a sense of escape. 
Um, but also possibly to move to live in a community. That's Uranus. It's people of like mind. So there could well be a growing movement, I've mentioned this before, could well be a growing movement of people who want to move out of mainstream society to possibly go and live on the land, Taurus, go back to simple basics, grow food in a natural, organic way, biodynamic way, linked to the natural rhythms of the earth. That is very much what Taurus is about. So I think over the next two, three years, we're going to see quite a significant movement in that direction. And it's people creating their own reality using those planetary um, combinations that I've just, I've just talked about. So, and this I see, particularly the square between Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces, very much as fifth dimensional reality where we're living in a dream we have no sense of time or space and we have mastered our energy to manifest because we're just sitting at the the hub of the wheel energetically and knowing how to alter that in a radio dial to shift our frequency and to create whatever we want and I've talked about this again a great deal in in recent videos I talk about all of these things in much more detail in my monthly newsletters, which are now about 7,000 words. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do that on any page of my website, pamgregory.com. Any information about my books, tutorial videos, etc., it's all on my website, pamgregory.com. So think about your own personal life at this full moon. Are you in a relationship? See where 29 of Libra falls for you. Is it in your fifth house of romance, your seventh house of long-term relationship, your 11th house of friendships? Is there any relationship where you have overcompromised or bent too much or been over-adaptive or given away self too much that perhaps your individual self-expression isn't being heard and seen enough within that relationship? Is that the case? And is that going to come to light in a very clear way at this full moon? And that will have to be adjusted going forwards because a full moon very often with what we, what we see, secrets can be revealed, can adjust our behaviour going forwards. As always with the full moon, it's a cycle of closure, completion, culmination. It can be the fruits of your labour, particularly if it falls in your sixth or tenth house. Is that very clearly operating in your life in a very positive way. And if you know where it falls in your chart, you can watch these patterns unfold with a greater sense of meaning in your life. So a great deal happening in this very karmic, very intense, dynamic, action-oriented second half of April. And um, I really hope that's been clear to you because we've got some very different energies operating here. But... Um, Really hope this has helped you and thank you so much for listening. Bye for now.